I actually, I started riding a bike in 86 after um, learning I had epilepsy. And the first thing the neurologist told me was, um, your driver's license will be suspended for mm -hmm. one year effective now. And you shouldn't go outside, you shouldn't do any sports, you shouldn't talk hmm. about it because epilepsy is very taboo and blah, blah, blah. And my first yeah. reaction was anger and then a little bit of frustration, deception, and sort of wonder, mm -hmm. like, why would I not be able to do any sports and to do other things? And because I couldn't drive, I had to get to work, which was 30 kilometers away somehow. So I started <laughs> looking in the Washington Post want ads because I lived in Maryland at the time and found what I called my hunk of junk, a green machine. Ah, your bicycle? Yeah. Yep, a green bike. <laughs> it was a Nord de France. So that was, I mean, that brought out the French side in me and I, I was super excited. It was uh, $200 and it was just, I mean, it was a steel frame. I think it was a 57 and I ride a 51. So that shows that, yeah, I didn't know anything about bikes, but, it, and it was this really kind of, ugly green, but it was, I mean, it was what got me to work and back. So yeah. all of a sudden in 86, I started riding 60K a day to work and back. And, and I became what I fondly call an endorphin junkie. And um, mm. just, yeah, really started to, to thrive on um, the rides to and from work and the wind, the rain, the snow, just feeling everything. And um one day when I got to work, I, what I started to do was to cut down the time um, that it would take me to get to work. I'd leave, uh -huh. instead of leaving at 20 of, I'd leave at a quarter to, a 10 to, to see if I could still make it to work on time. And that was the pressure that would push me harder. Yeah. So I was getting to work more and more red faced and huffing and puffing and sweaty. <laughs> and finally, one guy that I worked with said, are you training for something? And I, I, I burst out laughing and I said, no, I'm just commuting. But you know, I'm kind of having fun with it. And he was really into racing and he was quite a good cyclist. And he said, well, why don't you come and try a race? There's a, a criterium on Sunday at College Park. And I was like, a what? A <laughs> yeah, seriously, a what? <laughs> yeah, I've never ridden with anyone other than my bike. And I, you know, I'd be mortified if I had made anyone crash or anything. And he said, just come, just give it a try. So, so I show up with underwear on under my chamois, wool socks, a shirt with the sleeves cut off. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, everything that, you know, a chain mark on my leg, I mean, the whole bit. And and mm -hmm. I, so I rode the course a few times. I rode it forward and then I rode it backwards just to see what it was all about and had no clue about drafting or pace lines or anything. And um, so it was a 2.1 circuit with one sharp turn, a little, a small climb, a small descent and a sweeping turn. And um, I, yeah, I just set myself up on the front line for the start because I wanted <laughs> to be ready for the start. And all of a sudden at the start line, I he heard this buzz. I hear these girls behind me go, oh my God, look at that girl. And look, she's got a chain ring mark on her leg and she's got underwear on under her chamois. And oh my gosh. She doesn't even have cycling pedals and blah, 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 you know, just on and on. So I'm <gasps> thinking to myself, all right, I basically have two choices here. Either I'm going to be directly off the back, which is the most logical Thing that will happen or somehow I can use my power and just hang on for dear life and, and, you know, grab the last person that goes by and just try to hang on. And uh, so all of a sudden, I mean, I'm, I'm pulled out of my thoughts by this guy counting at the microphone going three, two, uh. one, a gunshot, which absolutely scared the shit out of me. And I just took off and <laughs> at the time the gears were 5312 and I put it in the 5312 and just sprinted for all I was worth to the front and then just went as hard as I could and stayed at the front and had everybody, you know, behind me. And <clears throat> every time someone tried to come up to pass me for their own safety, I'd accelerate because I was afraid that, you know, in the turns I'd go bowling and take people out. I mean, that was the biggest fear I had was that I would cause a, a crash. And so after five laps or so, I'm still in front and everyone's, you know, behind. And when they try to come up, I'd go faster. And all of a sudden, my friend Steve starts telling me, Marion, get some cover, cover yourself. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, it's really hot outside. <laughs> what are you talking about? Up at the sky, there's nothing <laughs> falling. And I'm getting cover from what? And then a few laps later, he's telling me to grab a wheel, grab a wheel. And, I, and so I started riding by doing this so I wouldn't get 
you know, distracted by him because I had no idea what he was talking about. And I just, I managed to stay at the front for, it was 40K. And I think until like three, 400 meters to go last lap, three girls came around me and I ended up fourth. And um, the girl who won, I still remember her name. She was racing for UVA um, in Charlottesville. Her name was Heather Morris. And so I went to see her and I was, I was like a groupie. I was so excited. I was like, wow, that was so cool. You know, what can I do to progress? And I remember she went like this and, gave me the once over and said, first thing, don't wear underwear under your chamois. You'll figure it out when you pee that it's really going to hurt and you know, change the bike. It's got to go. I mean, it's too big. It's or clean it and do something, get pedals, you know, do just redo everything. And I'm like, Oh, 